So I've been using this soldering iron tip for roughly a year now and this side works just fine. It will have the lead stick to it and melt to it and that's good and if I reverse the tip here this side no longer allows lead to stick to it. You can see it's kind of black and if I attempt to get the lead to melt to it it doesn't really melt to it. It will melt but it doesn't stick to that surface and I believe that is the core metal of the tip it's not plated with the nickel so what I'm going to attempt to do is remove some of that uh, oxide there and also the other parts of the nickel and electroplate the entire tip and this is the Hakko FX triple eight so a very commonly used soldering iron by many of you and right now I'm just heating up the iron so I can remove this lead because I don't want to inhale any aerosol lead dust that I'm going to be filing off so I want to clean that tip quite thoroughly and it appears that nearly all the lead has been removed so that's good I'm going to turn off the iron and let that cool okay so now that the iron is cool you want to remove the tip from the iron because if you were to try filing it with this ceramic core that would be an issue you might fracture it or crack it and then it wouldn't work too well anymore okay so I'm gonna focus my efforts on this side here where you can see the black and I'm gonna see if I can remove that and see if the core metal is exposed so I'm gonna use a file for that Okay, so it appears this core metal is not nickel. Uh, well, it does appear that this is the core metal, which may be some kind of stainless steel. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe an alloy of some form, but that is definitely not nickel. So, now that I've removed a fair amount of that oxide, and I may as well remove this as well and the rest I'm going to do in a bench grinder okay so here is the nickel anode so this is the positive side of the 5 volts I drilled two small holes in it ran a wire through there so it cracks off when I don't want it to that's terrific okay let's uh, go ahead and redo that <laughs> okay so I ran the wire through again so it won't crack off when I move it hopefully and so this is the nickel this would be the 5 volt side and then here's the tip this would be the negative side of the 5 volts so I just have the copper wrapped around the tip and I have it hanging on this enamel copper wire here just so it stays in position throughout the plating process. And I'm only going to be using a small amount of acid, just enough to submerge the part of the tip that I want to plate with the nickel. Any part of the tip that is exposed to the acid will be plated with the nickel anode here. So I'm going to show you a diagram of the process. Okay, so hopefully you can see all this all right. So, here's the nickel, that's the bluish color, and then the hydrochloric acid is the green, and then the tip is the pink, and then the copper, the wire that attaches to both the anode and the cathode here, is copper, and then the outside is glass. So, as soon as I put the acid in and apply the 5 volts, the electroplating process begins and you just wait until that's plated with enough of this nickel material and you're ready to go. Now you want to do this outside or in a very well ventilated area 
because it's going to be emitting hydro hydrogen gas and chlorine gas. And when that happens is when the acid actually turns into nickel chloride and then when the nickel bonds to the tip here, the acid becomes nothing. <laughs> uh, and when the uh, nickel chloride bonds with the tip, it emits chlorine gas. So hydrogen on this side, chlorine on that side. So good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and set this up outside and get this test running. All right, so I'm going to do the electroplating process, wearing a gas mask, so if you can't hear me, I may have to redo this voice. So, here's the nickel, and then here's the tip, and that's why you don't use alligator clips. That's what's left of them after attempting using muriatic acid. So, here we go. I'm going to add the acid, which is muriatic acid. So, 32% concentration, hydrochloric. All right. Open this guy up. And I don't have the voltage applied yet. I do that after I add the acid. Just so I don't have too many reactions going on at once. And just enough to cover the tip. And close that up. Nice and tight. Put that back where it belongs. Close that up. And now I'm going to add the voltage. So I should start cooking. Yep, there we go. You can see the bubbles there. That means everything's going well. And the nickel's starting to turn a bit green. And that green will carry over throughout the rest of the liquid. So, yeah, I'm going to leave this going for a bit. It is now 7.15. Not sure how long this will take, but I'll let you know once it's done. Okay, so it's been an hour, and there is a fair amount of nickel plating on the tip now. And one of the reasons I stopped the electroplating process is, well, clearly the anode fell into the acid, and also there was some copper contamination within the acid, so I didn't want to continue with the copper contamination. So... Now I need to clean off this tip with some distilled water and then after that some normal water and we'll have a look at the plating, see how good it is. It looks like there's some chipping going on, but I'm hoping that's just the outer layer. Alright. Okay, so after cleaning the tip with paper towel, distilled water, and then tap water, this is what the tip looks like. And it's not too pretty, but let's see if it holds some lead. That side's good. Now let's rotate and test the other side. Uh, could be better, but let's clean it off. Okay, so after cleaning the tip with the brass, it does adhere to that side as well. So I would say that the plating process was an overall success and there are some things I want to point out about doing this so if you choose to do it yourself there are some things you want to be aware of so I'll show you those. So throughout the electroplating process the acid is splashing around and some of it got up on the top here and ate away part of 
this material here which surrounds the copper core and this is what it looked like before so a nice smooth surface not too much distinction between the core and the outer metal but here you can see that it got eaten away a bit so something you want to be careful with when you do this yourself if you choose to and also the material along the outside kind of got eaten a little bit with the acid. I don't think it reduced its overall diameter, but something you want to keep in mind. Because the other one, you can see, is still nice and shiny. It wasn't destroyed by acid or anything like that yet. So if you have a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see the difference there. But it doesn't seem to have impacted its overall performance, so that's good. But something you would want to keep in mind if you were doing this. Alright, well thanks for watching, and I hope this was useful to you.